Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast with Latif Mercado. This is episode 28. Um, It's about 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Pretty good, um, pretty good day. Things are picking up. Called me for another Dallas show. They also called me for Pride. I can't mention which pride, but hopefully this week I'll be able to uh, let you know which one. So we always love doing the prides. In fact, the absolute first show, the absolute first show when I reunited the original cover girls, which at that time was Angel, Caroline, and Margot, we did it for Long Beach Pride. Okay, and this was for Club Poppy. So, anyone from the community who should know Club Poppy, um, and that's Jamie Awad. I've known them for years. Uh, great people, man. Great crowd. You know, I had a lot of choices to bring the cover girls out. Think about it. They haven't been together in over 20 years. I had the absolute originals. Well, you know, we have Sunshine and we have Margo. So people look at Sunshine as the absolute because she's on the Show Me video. She's on the Spring Love video. Uh, but then Margo came in and she did like all the other videos and she did all the touring. So they both um, play in a, a, a full, a, a great role, you know, because they were all a part of it. I think the same goes with TKA because you have KL. Tony, Angel, and A.B. I, I, I claim them all as original artists. Uh, same thing with Sweet Sensation. So we have, uh, um, well, for me, I have, we have really, mm, so it would be Betty, Marty, Margie, and Sheila. Okay, so those are four as well. Um, so and that's how I look at as the originals. Now, of course, everyone went out and started Recreating these other versions for whatever reasons. A lot of times, you know, it's hard. Groups have a hard time sticking together. It becomes a problem. I understand this. I know it's difficult. So I've never really hated on either side. Um, I hate it when one side tries to stop the other side from working, especially if the other side's an original version. So that bothers me. But we'll save that for a whole other. Um, podcast okay i'm gonna go let's go back to pride okay so like i said i had a lot of choices it was the first time putting the group back together and i was a very active still am very active agent so it's all about a phone call the right numbers and them wanting to be the first to put them on so i had a lot of choices and i thought about it and thought about it um i we had taken the girls Now, remember, we had no way of rehearsing. Excuse me, I'm drinking my tea. My wife brought in my tea. Um, I don't know, I'm not feeling this one. But it's better than me sounding like freaking Oscar the Grouch. Mm, I don't like that one. Yuck. Anyway, and she puts extra honey for me. But we had no way of rehearsing the group beforehand. So what we did was we compiled, you know, my idea when the girls got together, they were like, well, what do we do? You know, do we need a choreographer? Do we need to do this? I was like, no. My idea was always to keep it nostalgic, which meant the same girls, same look, same steps, same sort of outfits, okay? Same kind of outfits. so nobody really remembered all the choreography. So what we did was we went online and I found all of these clips. And Caroline did too. She went on, I think the two of us went on. I think she did a better job. I think she had like 
either she had most of them or she had some that I couldn't find. I believe she had them like on VHS. And what they did is she took those pieces and she restructured. She did a great job. I got to give it to her. She restructured the choreography from in its entirely, in its entirety, in, in, in its entirety from beginning to end for each song. And that's what I want. I didn't want anything new. Um, the beauty about the cover girl routine is honestly, they could do that routine until they're 98 years old because it doesn't require much. It's just, it probably requires a little bit more from Angel because she has to get in and out of the steps and they also walk back and forth and try to remember the songs. And so she's uh, definitely um, multitasking in many ways. The girls have their routines, it usually doesn't change. We give them little spots where they can kind of freestyle a little bit as far as their movements, but not much. And we keep that, so that way it's all. No sense in, in trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel. We want to we wanna work with what works, you know. People want to see a nostalgic show. So we ended up putting together the choreography from beginning to end. The whole thing. Uh, and then I think she made a video and sent the video to Margot and sent a video to Angel. Angel can learn it, but she's not, she doesn't have to nail it. She can go in and out, like I said. Margot had to nail it because that's what's gonna look good. They have to do the same exact steps. So anyway, so everybody worked on it. I don't know, maybe a month that we worked on it. And um, I ended up taking the show for Long Beach Pride, and this would be, I believe, 2011. The first time, now I had met Caroline already, I had met Sunshine, I had never met Margot. So I met Margot for the first time in the lobby of the hotel, wherever it was that we were staying in Long Beach. So that was the first time I ever got to meet her, and that was the first time she has seen Angel in like 20 something years. So in person, you know, of course, social media opened the doors to everybody, but in person. So we all got together, we all met up, we sat down, we ate, and it was it was a pretty cool experience. For me in, in particular, because I had never even seen a, an original cover girl performance ever in my life. I've never seen it. I've seen Angel perform later on after the group broke up. But during the highlight of the group, I was incarcerated. So the only time that I ever seen the group was when I was from the day room, I was watching whatever it was, MTV or VH1, wherever they were on at the time, I don't remember. And this was, we're talking about 87, 88. I went in 86, came out like 89. So it was during that time, during the highlight of freestyle. That's what's so crazy, people don't understand. I'm so gun home in this genre. Yeah, I was away during the highlight of it. Now I was a part of it in the beginning. Then I went away. And then when I came out, I, I just kind of reconnected and continued on. So anyway, um, so, what we did is we got to um, we got to the hotel after we ate. We I brought um I think we brought a radio. No, it was California, so I think uh, Caroline brought a radio, and we went into my room, and I believe I I moved the, the I moved the furniture over, and we have a video like that. You can probably find one of the videos. I think there's a video that we did to the music. Uh, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. It was like a little tribute video that we did. And it's in there. You can see them rehearsing in front of a window. And that was in my hotel room. And that was the first time that they came together in all those years. And they started to work on it. And I remember just sitting there. Because remember, as a manager now, you know, a lot of people have different uh, tactics. Now, my girls have never even had an argument. Put it this way. I've been with little Susie for, what, 30-something years. I've never even had an argument with her. And it's not about, it's just knowing how to, knowing what you're doing. You know, if you have people who are friends, but if you're working, same thing when I'm working. When I'm working and I have the cover girls, it's really hard, it's hard to tell that Angel's my wife. I don't come across like that. You know, I, I try to keep it professional. I try to make the girls all feel comfortable and let them all know that they're all important, all of them. So anyway, I knew they had the routine down. They had already chosen the dresses and they got their dresses. And you're, you'll see those dresses are really, really flowy, really pretty dresses. Um, 
And then it was showtime. And they were nervous as hell. <laughs> okay. I don't think I'm wrong. I I could have sworn that the number that was thrown at me was 40,000 people. Okay. So let's put it like this. Even if that was wrong and it was half of that, 20,000, that's a lot of damn people. But the place was, it seemed like the entire Long Beach, city of Long Beach was pride. So we went on stage and I remember the promoter, just as uh, the girls were getting on stage, uh, the promoter, um, he made a comment. As soon as they announced them and they say, give it up for the cover girls. And you hear the promoter in the background say something like, oh my God, look how beautiful. And and he was right. They were, they looked beautiful. I mean, I think it was just also a happy time, a very, very happy time. And it's still happy times. I'm, I'm really fortunate that we've gone all these years and it's still been a beautiful thing. I, I love those girls. You know, I got I got it. We go at it, but nothing personal. Nothing. It's it's they you know they challenge me. Caroline loves to challenge me, but you know she knows how I feel about her. But we it's all good. It's just business. It's her. You know, oh let's do it like this. I'm like no, I think we need to do it like that. That's the kind of argument I'm talking about. You know, it's nothing nothing else. So but um, but it always works. It always works, and I understand them as individuals. I understand their what they're able to do, what they're unable to do. And I always try to do what I can to accommodate them and make them as comfortable as possible. You know, same thing with Angel. So, you know, and Angel, we stay in the same room. So, you know, we know what we like. So, you know, we, we everything's pretty cool. Promoters love bringing us in. But anyway, we went, we did the show and we rocked the damn house. And I was so excited and I felt so good. And I'm going to tell you what made me feel even better than the show. And that was when they gave us the booth to sign autographs. I brought with me maybe a thousand pictures. And I felt bad because we ran out of pictures. And I give them away for free. I don't sell them. This line, we were like in a field. I swear it looked like, I don't remember what field. Whoever's listening to this from Long Beach will tell me exactly where it's at. So please post in a comment if I'm if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but um, this line went on like forever. I remember the line going straight out to the fence and then all of a sudden turning to the left. It was crazy. And I wasn't familiar with the mentality of the girls as far as can they, can they do this? Remember, they were cover girls before me, before I was a part of it. What was the tactic? You know, and I never really talked about it before. I told them, we, we, you know, we have to do a meet and greet. I'm big on meet and greets. I am huge on meet and greets. I think they they are so important. They, they're they tiring. They're tiring. They could be frustrating. They could get unorganized. They could get dangerous. But, but no matter what, I do everything in my power to make sure we're able to do them. And the key is to sign absolute every autograph that gets online. The only thing we can't do is we can't have the, the fans go sit there and wanna talk about memories. We, we don't have the time. We would love to, but we don't have the time, you know? So <clears throat> so they have to pretty much get the autograph, take a picture, and then move on. So, and we did that. And, you know, I had to get the girls seats, so they got the seats, and then, you know, we organized it, and it was work. It was, it was great, it worked out. It worked out perfect, you know? So, uh, excuse me. So, <clears throat> so I feel that the you know. So that was I thought I made an incredible decision when it came to which show to do, which should be the first show for the Cover Girls to do. Not just because we were able to service a really huge and important community, um, and I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a gay community. I'm talking about a community of fans. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a freestyle community. We were able to serve this incredible community without any problems. Um, and everybody was so appreciative. It was just really, really um, a great thing. And 
it was good for the girls. It was good. It was a good way of letting them, them know that, hey, they still love you. They still want to see you. They still appreciate you. So let's let's do this. Let's go out there. Let's have a good time. Let's do these shows and let's let's have a ball. Let's you know, and and that's what we've been doing since 2011. I can't believe right now how many years already has passed. It's crazy. It's nine years. Nine years. I was told that um, Angel told me that I've had the original Cover Girls together longer than the original manager. <laughs> so I, he has. Hey, I don't take anything from him. He put the group together. He made them who they were. Um, they disband. I got them back together, and now I continue the legacy. So it's a beautiful thing. And they're not my cover girls. They're the cover girls. People say, well, you got, you got lost cover girls. No, there's only one cover girl group. Believe me, there's only one. You say what you want to say, but there's only one cover girl group. And they're not lost cover girls. They're the cover girls. Andrew, Caroline, Margot, and Sunshine. Okay, those are them. So, but anyway... So they called me this week. Actually, the people that called me for Pride this week, it's not in Long Beach again, so let's make that clear. I just can't announce where it's at. Um, they called me last year, and we couldn't do it because we were on the Alan Beck show. So they called me back uh, yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. They called me back yesterday, and they said, we're really hoping... That you're available because last year you weren't available and I told them yeah and Alan Beck will probably that's the freestyle explosion they'll probably call me for the same date um but I'm gonna have to pass on that particular date unless he doesn't have a problem doing a second one you know but um with uh with them I want to do this show I really do want to do it. and then this one I'm excited so um it apparently will be on the parade and uh we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna participate quite a bit. Uh, we're probably gonna have Angel come in a day early because they have like a kickoff party. It's really hard to get the other girls to come in and do those. Just their schedules don't always agree with that. So we'll come in. Angel will handle that part, and then the girls will come in for the show, do the show, and then the parade. So and no, they're not gonna walk the parade. They'll be in an open air car. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that should be cool. <laughs> we should be okay. Um, anyway, so uh, tune in, man. Just stay, stay connected. Anybody who's following me on social social media, you know, I post them right away. So, as you know, right now we got Houston, San, uh, Houston, Austin, and Fresno coming up. So February fifteenth, Fresno. Um, then the 28th we're in Houston and then the 29th we're in Austin so any of those shows that you can make try to make it try to make it okay they're incredible shows we're gonna have a good time and, and man come up to me let me know you listen to the podcast that will make me feel real good remember the podcast is brand new people come up to me about my books all the time Yo, La, don't bring the books. La, I got your book. Can you sign this book? Or I bought your book. Or I got all your books. Or, you know, I can't wait for your next one to come out. Or they'll start talking to you. And I love to hear that, man. You don't. You have no clue of how much I love hearing that. Do not ever think, oh, I don't want to bother him talk about his book. No, are you kidding me? I spent so much time writing those things. Please, come let me know how much you love them. <laughs> you know? So, speaking of which, uh, March 27th, I'll be dropping three more books, and that's Yes, Yes, Y'all, book one, two, and three. You definitely, definitely got to get your hands on that book. It'll be available through Amazon, also Barnes & Noble, pretty much anywhere online. Uh, selling books at stores make no sense these days. You only stock a couple of them. Online, we'll be everywhere, okay? So, be on the look at Yes, Yes, Y'all by Latif Mercado, books one, two, and three. There's three of them. Um, I have a special going on right now. If you go on my personal Facebook page and look up on the cover, um, I have a special now. I'm only allowed to do that as a pre-sale uh, because um, Amazon doesn't really let me play with the numbers like that. Like I can't get creative. So, uh, but I can do it as pre-sales. So anyway, go in there. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm not trying to sell anything on this podcast. Just want to just inform you guys. Just go on my personal Facebook page, Latif Mercado, and just look up on the cover. I have it. I have it advertised there. And if you have any questions, 
let me know. But, or you can just wait till March 27th. All three books will be available through Amazon as well as in Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble. Um, but... The books I'm used to people coming up to me and I enjoy it. I, I never, it never gets old for me. I love it. I feel great. It makes me feel real, real good. Um, but now the podcast, I, I don't have anybody. It hasn't happened yet because I haven't been out. I haven't been on the road since I started recording these podcasts. So I'm, I'm I want to see who's going to be the first one. Who's going to be the one that, well, I had a couple people call me. That's different. These are people that I know, that I consider them friends. Um, I'm talking about straight up strangers that I never met, fans that I've never met before, to come up and say, hey. And I know people are listening because we get a lot of hits. So the hits are, are there, we're, we're getting the numbers. Um, so, um, so somebody's listening. So those people I appreciate it. So please, please do not hesitate to come up to me and let me know that you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, okay? <laughs> All right? So, anyway, other than that, everything is wonderful. Everything is real cool. Um, just moving forward. Uh, I was on the Freestyle Against Phonies page a little while ago. People love that page. <laughs> All I want to do is man it. I just want to man it. I just want to make sure that you know, people on on there being disrespectful. Well, they're gonna be disrespectful, but they're not being stupid and vulgar and you know, so I wanna make sure we can control that. But um so if you guys are members of that page, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, it's there. It's not easy to get in anymore like it was. I'm very picky because there are people trying to shut it down. So I'm I'm picky about who I let in. So I check you out, trust me. If you're if you're requesting to get onto into that group um, and you see you would decline a few times, I won't tell you why. If you don't know why, then you don't uh, you know you don't belong in it. So anyway, yeah, it's not for anybody. It's not for everybody. So so all right, guys. So listen, um, that's it for tonight. Thank you for listening to me once again. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Be safe, and until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.